In this example, I have a scroller and I have an element. What I want to do here is to run an animation on this element when I scroll this scroller. Which scroll-based timeline should we use here? A view progress timeline or a scroll-based timeline? Since we want to progress the animation based on the scroll position, not on the element's position in the current scroller, then we should use a scroll progress timeline. So when the scroll bar is at the very top of the scroller, the animation will be at 0%, and when it's all the way down, it will be 100%. But how are we going to implement it? Before that, let's quickly see what we have in the code. In the HTML, we have a scroller element, and we have some spacer element, so we have some room for scrolling. And next to that, we are displaying the box element. It says box here, but it's a circle, because the animation timeline is not set properly in the CSS. But we will fix that in a little bit. Now in the CSS, we have the spacer with the height 100 viewport. And the scroller has some border, some width, height, and overflow to scroll. And the box is an element with width 200 pixels, height 200 pixels, and the default background color is white. And below that, we are specifying the animation. Like the previous example, we are using animation called two colored circle, linear, and forwards. And the animation is the same here. It starts with the background color blue, and then it turns to red and to a circle. Now let's try to set the timeline. To set the timeline, we're going to say animation timeline. And since we're going to use a scroll progress timeline, we can use the scroll function here. So we want to progress the animation of the box element when we scroll this element. And remember, to progress the animation, we have to define the timeline somewhere. And we have three options here. It can be self, but that's not correct because the element we are trying to animate is not scrollable. We can make it root, but that's not correct either because we don't want to run the animation when we scroll the whole page. We want to run the animation when we scroll the scroller. And nearest also will not work because nearest is the same as root here because the nearest scrolling ancestor is also the root element. So that means anonymous scroll progress timeline would not work here. Instead, we want to use a named scroll timeline. Now, when we want to use a named scroll timeline, we have to specify an element to create the timeline on. And in this case, the element we want to scroll is the scroller element. So let's go to that element and define the timeline. Let's go up here and the scroller, we're going to say scroll timeline name. And let's just give it a name of my scroller. So now the timeline is defined on this scroller and we want to use it on the box element. So instead of using anonymous scroll timeline here, we're going to use the name. So let's say my scroller. And since we want to run the animation for the whole scrolling length, we don't need to specify an animation range. So the animation should start from the very top to the very bottom. So let's save and try. When I scroll, the animation is still not working. But why is that? Let's open up the dev tools to see why. So we have defined the timeline on the scroller element and we are trying to animate the box element. But remember, in order to use a defined timeline, the element we are animating should be a descendant of it. So it should be a child or any sub-child of that element to be able to use that timeline. And since Box is not a child of a scroller, then we can't use that timeline. But can we fix that? And yes, we can using timeline scope. So what is a timeline scope here? A timeline scope defines the scope in which the elements can access the timeline. By default, the scope is the element that has the timeline. So it's defined on the scroller element, and any element that is descendant of that scroller will be able to access the timeline, including the scroller itself. So if we can't change the timeline scope, then we can include more elements to access that timeline. So by default, the timeline scope is at scroller here. If we can move it up, then we can include the box. So what's a common parent for both scroller and box? In this example, it's the body element. So if we can move the timeline scope from the scroller to the body, then we can include the box in it. And there's a property for that. It's called timeline scope. So let's scroll to the body and let's use it here. Timeline scope. Which timeline are we trying to change the scope of? In this example is the my scroller timeline. So we can say my scroller and let's save. But without trying, it looks like it's working because you can see now that the animation is at 0%. Let's try to scroll the scroller and it works as expected. That's it for a scroll progress timeline. Now let me switch to another example to learn how to use timeline scope for a view progress timeline. I am here in another example. I have a welcome element and I have the box element. What I want to do here is I want to run the animation for the box element based on the position of the welcome element. Here's what I want to achieve. When I scroll, 
I want the animation to start as soon as the welcome element starts to leave the page and I want the animation to be complete once the whole element leaves the page. So I want the animation to start here and it should progress all the way to this point. And in this example, since we want to progress the animation based on the position of some element, then we want to use a view progress timeline. Before we learn how to do that, let's quickly review the code. So in the HTML code, I have an element with the class name welcome, and then I'm displaying the box and I'm displaying some spacer element. So we have some room for scrolling. In the CSS, I have defined the spacer here. Now let's scroll up. For the welcome element, I have nothing special here. I've added all the necessary stylings to make it look like this. Now let's see the box. The stylings of the box is the same as the previous example, so nothing new here. So the animation will be the same. The default background color is white. The animation will start from the background color blue to red, and it will turn to circle. Now let's define the animation timeline. From this example, you can see that the subject element is different from the element we want to animate. The element we want to animate is the box, but the element we want to track the position of is the welcome element. So in this case, we can't use anonymous view progress timeline. In other words, we can't use the view function because the subject element is not the same as the element we want to animate. Instead, we want to use a named view progress timeline. So first we want to define the subject and then we want to use that subject for running the animation. So the subject is the welcome element. So let's go there and let's say view timeline name and let's just call it my subject but you can call it anything you want now let's use it in the box so we're gonna say animation timeline and let's use my subject but now what about animation range i want the animation range to be when the element is exiting in other words i want the animation to run while the welcome element is exiting the viewport and there is one we can use without modifying which is exit so let's say animation range and it will be exit and remember, it's the same as exit 0% to exit 100%. But let's just use exit. So let's save and try. So if I try to scroll, the animation is not running. So what's wrong here? Again, let's open up the dev tools to see what we have. So we have the box element and we have the welcome element here. The welcome element is the subject element we are tracking the position of. And we want to use that subject to animate the box element. But the problem here is that the welcome element and the box element are siblings. And the only way to be able to use a named view timeline is when the element is a descendant of the subject. So in this case, if the box was a child of the welcome, then that would work. And again, that has to do with the timeline scope. In view timeline, the timeline scope is defined for the subject element and all of its descendants. So we can fix that by moving the timeline scope to an element that is common for both elements. And in this case, the element is the body element. So let's move the timeline scope to the body. So let's scroll to the body and do that. And for view timeline scope, it's the same as scroll timeline scope. We can use the same property timeline scope. And the one we want to change the scope of is my subject. So let's save and try. Let's close the dev tools and try to scroll. So you can see the animation started here. As soon as the welcome element started to leave the viewport, the animation started to progress. Let's continue scrolling. And here the animation becomes 100%. And that's all we needed to do to fix it. This is all you need to learn about timeline scope. In the next video, we will learn about browser support and how to fix broken elements for the browsers that don't support it.